All right, so today we're gonna to talk about understanding the market. We're gonna have a little bit of fun today. You guys are gonna see we're gonna do some exploring. Very excited about this, so let's get to it. All right, so my goal for you today is to gain an understanding of your competitors, to position ourselves for success. We wanna just do an investigation, wanna see what's out there, get a feel for what the market looks like, and then afterwards we'll move forward and we'll build our own plans. So we don't wanna to dwell too much on our competitors, but we do wanna understand what the current situation looks like so we can best position ourselves ahead of our competitors and differentiate ourselves. All right, so let's take a closer look at the service that you'll be offering. So we're gonna start by analyzing the competitors. In this, in this uh, lesson today, we're gonna to, it's all about our competitors Again, we're not going to dwell too much on this in the future because understanding our competitors is really just, you know, a quick, easy phase. We really just see, you know, what's out there, get a good understanding of it, and then we don't want to think about our competitors. We don't want to build what our competitors already have. We're a new business. We're going to do things differently. We're going to position ourselves differently. So let's just understand our competitors, and then afterwards, we'll go from there. All right, so in order to do this, we're going to start off by just doing a basic Google search of your service in the specific area of the plan to operate. So today I'm going to look up auto detailing in Oakville. We're going to do a preliminary search, see what's out there, and then we're going to narrow that down. Next thing is to determine who your top three competitors are. So who comes up first on Google? Who's the highest rated? Who are the modern websites and active social media pages? So you want to actually see who our real competitors are. You know, there's going to be a lot of people operating our service, but typically they're going to be, you know, just one person operations. They're going to be maybe older, older school, maybe they're part-time. They're not real competitors for our business. The real competitors are the people that are the most present, the most, um, you know, the most online, the highest rated and most actively looking for people's business. We're not going to worry about competitors that aren't really uh, doing much to look for people's business. You know, there's people who have an existing customer base. They're happy with that. Their customers are happy. They want to stick with that. That's fine. We're going to go for the companies that are looking for business, looking to grow. Last thing is to conduct a digital audit. So we're just going to look, you know, we're just going to review these. Again, this sounds fancy, but we're really not going to be doing anything too fancy. We're just going to audit based on our own insights and our own intuitions. Uh, so let's jump right into this. So I am going to start off before we go into our competitors. I'm going to exit this and we're going to take a look. Uh, we're going to take a look at the actual market. All right. So, um, so let's just make the screen a little bit wider here so we can just focus on this. So as you can see, I've started to look up mobile auto detailing uh, in Oakville. That's where we're going to target. Uh, so as you know, my service is Matt's car cleaning. That's the that's my hypothetical service that we're going to be building, uh, that I'm going to be building throughout this process. So let's do some research of what's out there for mobile auto detailing. So if you look it up, you'll be able to see that, um, you'll be able to see what Google looks like at the start. Um, so again, we're just going to have a list here. If you're thinking about, you know, what a typical customer is seeing. So this is, you know, this is an example. We're going to walk this, we're going to walk through this as if a typical customer would. So let's say I'm someone who needs my car detailed right now. I need my car cleaned. Uh, it's the springtime and I am looking for this service. So I'm going to likely search up, you know, if I don't already have a company or if I don't already have friends that have told me some referrals, this is going to be my trajectory. I'm going to look up the service in my area. I want it to be mobile. I want them to come to me. So let's look that up. So the first thing we'll see on Google, like we'll see a lot of times is an ad. Usually, usually you'll see maybe one, two, three, sometimes up to four or five ads at the top of the page and then also at the bottom. And then we'll see Google's little directory here. Um, so I want to check this out. We're going to look at all the competitors on our map that we're going to analyze here. All right. So yeah, it does look, you know, it looks a little bit intimidating at first. And I, and I you know, I want to show this off at first too, because this is probably what you're going to see. You know, if your town's a little bit smaller, let's say I looked up Milton, uh, we probably just see maybe a couple, maybe some of these would come up as well. But this is really just a scope uh, of all the auto detailing places in our region. All right, so again, we're going to see some ads here that come up at the top. These are people who, these are companies that have paid to get this visibility, obviously. And then we'll see the rest down here. All right, so we're going to choose a couple to look into. Um, we'll start by investigating, you know, I, I, I like to focus on, you know, the ones that are at the top because that's really what the competitor, what the customers are going to see. So it is important to look at the, uh, you know, the ones that have ads. And then also just the ones that are organically at the top here. This is based on their organic rating next to the keywords that I've searched. All right, so you know we'll start off with Cavelli Stables Mobile Detailing. So as you can see, they have 93 reviews. They're a five-star rated service. We got a lot of five stars. That's crazy. Um, so I, I mean, I'm going to be a little bit skeptical of that. So we're going to look at their reviews specifically because we want to make sure those are actually legit reviews. All right, so if you look here, 
Um, we have you know, we have their call to action button, which is something that you choose. So they actually have request a quote. Their objective is for you to get a quote. They know that customers typically are going to wonder about the price after they've seen, you know, they see this Google listing, they see a five star review, they just want to jump right into it, get the quote, and then determine if they're going to be going forward with the service. Um, so the address is actually in Toronto. They're located in Toronto, but they're going to pop up here in Oakville Forest because they're running an ad. They've set their AdWords uh, to be, you know, around our region. So they're going to pop up for us when we search up mobile auto detailing Oakville. As you can see, they have pretty much all the information that they that they need here for their listing. Um, they have pretty much entirely five star reviews. And so if we look at this, um, you know, we can actually see that some of these reviews are, are actually very much uh, a thorough in depth, you know, we got some local guides, which are people that make lots of reviews. It's not a, you know, a professional person or anything, anyone that's paid to do this, but a local guide, anyone can apply to be and it's someone who's active, you know, leaves a lot of reviews on businesses and is seen as, you know, some sort of uh, influencer for Google. Uh, something that, uh, I mean, I, ha I had fun with it, just playing around, see what that process was all about. And anyone can be a local guide. So it's pretty cool there. So as you can see, they actually have, you know, they have pictures included in this. They have, you know, names. So they named Joey specifically, uh, talking a lot about their service. So, you know, this is a really, you know, for them, a, a good sign that these reviews are legit. They haven't just made up these reviews. They're not fake reviews. Typically, you'll see if they just have one word, uh, if they don't have really any categories. So like here, they got positive on professionalism, punctuality, punctuality, quality, value. Uh, so they got a lot. Um, yeah, they got a lot here and they got peop They got a lot of reviews from people who leave a lot of reviews, you know, like eight, you know, one, two, they have legitimate reviews here. So that's something to note. They have actually, they've, they clearly do a good job for their customers. Their customers are happy. So now let's check out their website. So again, these aren't going to be something that everyone has on their listing there. So they've actually populated that. They've done a good job. All right. So they actually have a little bit of message uh, about, yeah, about protecting yourself from coronavirus. That's, you know, that's a good little uh, bonus. Shows that they're up to date. They're using their website consistently. So let's check out what they have. So you got someone detailing their website here. Um, they have various different service options. They got before and after. It's pretty, that's really cool, actually. Um, they talk about customizing to your needs. They show a lot of luxury cars, but they also show you know more practical cars as well. Um, so you can see that they do a little bit of both. They do premium, they do industrial, they do all kinds of things there. So they, you know, they clearly haven't established. They had, they've definitely established themselves, and they've done you know a pretty solid job. So we can see their gallery, the blog about us. You know, they have they have you know quite a bit. Uh, they have quite a bit of you know stuff going on here. They've really used their website. It seems modern. They got some calls to action. Got their number everywhere. Um, and then they really break apart their services. So they have quite a few, you know, services that they offer. Um, so let's do, let's check out their booking. So they actually do have online booking. They've got completely mobile or, or sorry, completely online booking that they, they have available. So it looks like we can actually, you know, book our, uh, book our service and they have quite a few here. Uh, this is, you know, this is a little bit varied. It looks like they, they stray away a little bit from just, uh, just auto detailing. I mean, they're talking barbecue cleaning, boat, uh, boat ceramic, garage clean. So they do, uh, they do a couple of different things. Uh, so clearly they're not just focused on cars. Maybe they're more established. They just want to increase their revenue streams, doing some additional, additional things. So this is actually a booking app um, that I, I believe is going to actually, yeah, so to give us a quote and it's actually going to let us book, which is really cool. So we got to select a service, select a date and time, enter your details and likely confirm the booking. Uh, so that's pretty cool. They have, they basically have the online booking there. It's a pretty impressive website. Um, and overall, I would say it's, they've done a really good job, but, you know, it's a really, really solid online presence. If I'm a customer seeing this, I'm probably going to trust their business. They're highly reviewed. They got a lot of services. They're professional. Let's check out their social media real quick. Check out their Instagram page. So yeah, they have 1,500 followers. They're clearly, uh, let's see, let's see when their last post was. Yeah, they're very active two days ago. So they're actually very active. Um, they've, you know, they mix in some sales. They show their service a little bit, show the office. A lot of, yeah, I mean, they got they got some winners. They got a lot of different car photos. They got a lot of cool stuff. So you know, they, they could maybe use a little bit more variety, you know, mixed in a barbecue. It's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, I think it's, you know, they, they're clearly very active. They clearly are a business they want to grow. And as you can see, Joey here, like we saw in the reviews, he's the business owner. He's the guy. Uh, so he's done a great job with his, uh, with everything there. I wouldn't say anything too negative. So we can learn a lot from, uh, from this, uh, from this business, um, Cav Cavalier, 
uh, Cav- Cavalli uh, stables. We can we can really learn a lot from their business and hopefully take some insights from this and see how we can position differently. Some things on the top of my mind just seeing this is that they do have quite a few different services. There's a you know quite a lot of uh, you know in terms of uh, actual you know simplicity. It, it is very complex. It is probably leaning towards the higher end of vehicle and probably people who are are looking to invest and really get a, a lot of different services. So it doesn't seem. It seems like it's very clear that they're going for that premium and. You know, they also have additional services they've also built out. Um, so it seems like maybe they, uh, they're they maybe a little bit less focused on just auto detailing and really just trying to do multiple services, which might be an advantage for us if we just focus on one. And also you can see that they're just focusing on premium. So maybe there's an opportunity for the less premium market um, that we can go after. So those are some initial insights. We'll talk about those later on, but this is pretty cool. Um, so I like that overall. So we're, let's take a look at a couple other ones real quick here before we jump back into the, the presentation there. All right, um, so yeah, we clicked on the ad there. Now we'll see, okay, let's see the one that's at the top of the organic. So this one is an ad, this is just purely uh, organic SEO. So let's click on mobile auto care. They're actually located in Oakville, so that's, they're actually a lo local uh, business, car cleaning service in Oakville, Ontario. You know, they don't have as many reviews. They got six Google reviews. They're all five stars, which is, you know, which is really good, but at the end, at, but also, you know, they're not really, it's something that kind of does hurt a little bit because they don't have a lot of reviews. We don't know for sure if they're reliable. It does look like these reviews are legit, uh, other than maybe the first one, but it looks like there's some actual comments. There's photos to prove it up, back it up. So it is solid, but you know, that's an opportunity. They only have six reviews, probably do a lot better than that uh, in that sense. They do have some visuals. Um, so overall, they've done a good job to build out their uh, build out their Google listing here. So let's check out their website, and they don't have a call to action. If you don't, if you notice this, actually, I do want to point that out before we go. They don't have a call to action. So if you looked at, uh, if we look back at Cavalli Stables, they have right there request a quote. Let's see if anyone else has that. Um, let's see. Might actually just be an option for the ad. That could be something. Nope. So yeah, so we can see that they can all actually have a call to action. That's what I thought. Um, so that's one thing to notice that with mobile auto care detailing, they don't have a call to action here, which might deter a customer. It might make a customer not, you know, not have an immediate thing to do. So they'll just go to the next one. Whereas this, it's very clear. It's massive. It says request a quote. So you're just going to, you know, without even thinking, you're probably going to quick click that. So anyways, let's go to this website real quick, check it out. This one looks very, uh, a lot more simple, a lot more clean cut. You know, a stock image here, which I don't love the use of. I think that they could probably have some pictures of their own company. Uh, but the, anyways, they have, you know, big fonts. They clearly know that you're not going to spend too much time on their, you know, on their website. And they they really just want you to contact them. They don't even have, you know, they ha don't have an about us page on anything like that. They literally just have their homepage, which has all their information. So it's not going to be going after someone who really wants to do a lot of investigation. They're probably targeting the lower end of the market, only charging $120 for both an interior and exterior detailing. So it does look like they're a lower, cheaper, affordable option for people. They really just have interior, exterior. They have maybe some polishing, COVID package, a couple of add-ons, but overall they don't have too, too much here. Um, so this is actually very attainable. This is something that we can look at as a as a reference for ourselves because literally they don't have too many visuals. They don't have too much going on. It's a very simple website. I would assume they just used uh, you know, a basic website builder and not really any tools to go along with it. Uh, and it doesn't even look like they have social media. So we won't even go to search that up. So it doesn't really look like online presence is really an emphasis for them, but they have managed to get to the top of Google, which is probably the most important, you know, definitely the most important thing. Shouldn't say probably, but definitely the most important thing. So when customers are searching up uh, you know, car cleaning Oakville or mobile detailing Oakville, and they're coming up first. A lot of this stuff's not going to matter because they they came up first, so people will just give them a call, which is great. So it's very simple, very clean. You can see that you don't need a big fancy website in order to get the top of Google and actually have a business. All right. Uh, so there's a couple other ones here. You can see that there are not very many reviews on them. That's something I've noticed in I'm noticing in general, and that's a really good opportunity because it's very easy to get more than one two three like these there's not a lot of reviews and these guys are at the top these companies are at the very top of the google ranking and ultimately it's gonna be a great opportunity for us if we can get near the top and we can have a lot more reviews so if we scroll down to the bottom we can see some more have more reviews they're not quite a five star which is honestly you probably don't even want to be a five star necessarily close to a five star for me 
um, makes uh, makes it look a lot more real, a lot more authentic. Like a 4.8 with 146 reviews looks a lot more credible than a five star with two reviews. That's just my insights from uh, from just looking at it as a potential customer. Um, and the reason that these you might be wondering to yourself, well, how did they get to the top and these guys with all these reviews are more at the bottom? It's because I've looked up mobile car detailing. So these ones look like they're they're not mobile. So Spotless Auto Detailing Center is not a mobile detailing business. Oakville Car Wash Detailing Service is not mobile. Mr. Cool Detailing is not uh, auto. And then this one is mobile, but it's closed right now. So all these being said, when we look at this, you know, when we were first looking at this and seeing a lot of options, really there's only a couple of mobile detailing services and really there's not that much competition. They don't have very much built out, you know, they don't really have a built out um, page, like they don't really have a built out online presence. These guys don't even have a website. They don't even have a website listed here. That's, that's you know, what, who's going to book without at least seeing that there's a website, clicking on a website, seeing anything. They don't really have anything. They have a service package that they've listed here, 80 to $130. But, you know, we have to, we, we don't even, we don't have a website for them. That's not going to be a good look for us, all right? And, you know, even just like looking at their reviews, uh, I, I'm seeing, you know, Ethan Kamish, like this guy looks like he's a, a teenager and he's leaving a five-star review. It, it, very, very questionable whether he was actually a customer. So I'm, I'm questioning this business not really uh, for me that intimidating as someone who's going to start an, a car cleaning business. I'm actually excited because these are these are some opportunities. This one I like a little bit better. You know, they clearly are more personal. They have people. Again, not too many reviews, like literally two, but they do have the call to action. Uh, they do have you know a number and uh, let's. I mean, let's see their website real quick. Uh, 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 let's see. Oh, looks like it's taking me right to their Facebook page. So they don't even have a website. 120 followers on Facebook. Not, not too bad. You know, it's pretty solid. But uh, again, I'm not really, I'm, I'm seeing this as a huge opportunity. I'm seeing a lot of people, you know, they're taking, you know, they take good visuals. They include the team. I like that a lot. I think that goes a long way. It shows some personality behind the brand. But again, they don't even have a website. So for me, I'm going to be questioning that a little bit. Let's see what their booking app looks like. Okay, so they do have the same booking. They use the same booking tool. It uh, looks like Square Site, so it looks like this is just a booking app that companies can use. So, yeah, so they have this. I mean, that's going to allow people to book, which is which is pretty good. It's better than not having anything. But, again, it's going to be difficult without that landing page. People do like to see a landing page for a sense of comfort. Uh, but that being said, you know, I think that they, they do, you know, having a booking app and having social media being used, they're just leveraging probably the two most important sides of it uh, in terms of online presence. It would just be a little bit nicer if they did have a landing page up and a, and a website and maybe a little bit more information here. It looks like it's very... Uh, very uh, mi minimal. All right. So yeah, overall, we're not going to spend too much more time on this. Let's jump back to our document. We've had a look, you know, we we're intimidated at first a little bit maybe. Um, but once we've actually taken a look, uh, we've seen that there's actually not too much competition. And there's a massive market in Oakville when it comes to the, the size of the actual customer base. So we're feeling good about that. So let's jump back to our presentation here. So we did a little bit of analysis before this of our competitors. We saw a competitor one Cavelli Stables detailing. Uh, so if you remember, that was the one who ran the ad. Uh, you know, seeing Google ran seen with the ad. We analyzed the reviews, the price of their services offered, 185, a little bit high on the higher end. Website notes, lots of visuals, reviews, call to action, online booking, and they have over a thousand followers uh, on social media. They're doing a good job there. So if you're doing a general competitor, you know, analysis. Again, this is sort of the things that you want to look for, what their business website is, Google ranking, reviews, price services, website notes, social media notes. Very, very simple. You're not doing a complex analysis of a competitor here. That's the beauty of a startup, especially a summer service startup. You don't have to do a thorough analysis. We just need to get a, a, an idea of what's out there. So I did the same thing for number two. You know, I chose three, so I chose mobile auto care and same thing for number three, which is infinity mobile auto detailing. So I, I've chosen three done analysis, gotten comfortable with three, you're definitely, uh, it's definitely a great idea for you to do that, choosing three and uh, just doing a similar analysis, just, you know, a visual analysis, click on their links, see how their website, you know, what, what kind of links do they have throughout their website? Is it easy to follow? Do they have proof, you know, social proof? Do they have reviews? Things like that. It's all you really need to do for competitor research. So now you can think about after you've done that, you can think about what insights you've gained for your service. So what do you like about your competitors? 
you know, it's not, not a bad idea to actually, you know, when you look at it more from an open mind, they're not really your competitors yet. They're not your enemies yet. Um, but they're, you know, you're just seeing what's out there. So what do you like about them? What are some of the things that they do good? If you were a potential customer for this, what would you think when you got to their website? Like, hmm, I like that. I, I think that this is a good company I want to do business with. Then think about what you don't like about your competitors. So those are the opportunities. Like what did you, you know, when you go on the website, was it a poor experience to take a long time to load? Was it confusing? You know, were there too many services offered? Was it unclear about what the process was? All those things that you can keep in mind. Just thinking like if you leave with too many questions, you leave feeling uncertain, you feel like you want to get off the website right away, you want to get off their social social media page or you don't they don't even have a website. These are all things you can take a note of or a mental note of what you don't like about your competitors. And you can think about are you, are there opportunities to differentiate? So thinking, you know, is there is there that clear cut path that you see across the board on all your competitors that, you know, something you thought would be a great idea for you to offer as part of your service that you don't see any other competitors offering? So is there those opportunities or maybe there's even just those smaller opportunities? Like I mentioned with the reviews, you know, a couple of com our top competitors only have less than five reviews. So, you know, we get reviews from our first customers, our first week, we already have more than them. So that's not, that's an opportunity to differentiate and build our online brand. And even just them not having social media, them having a non-modern website. These are all opportunities for us to differentiate. And then lastly, are there more niches within this industry than you expected? So thinking about your service, maybe you had a, a preliminary idea of what the service, what it was involved in the service. That's okay if you, you know, you didn't have a, a great big deal of knowledge. I, you know, I, I don't think anyone's going to have that knowledge when they first get started. But once you've done some exploring, you know, if you've done some research into your competitors, done some Google searches, were there different niches that you, that were available than you expected? So for example, when we're thinking of that first competitor we looked at, um, what the heck was their name? Yeah. Cavalli Stables Detail. I mean, this is, this is another note. I don't even remember their name. Cavalli Stables Detail. I mean, it's something that I don't really understand why the name, I think it probably is last name. So it makes sense in that sense, but Cavalli Stables Detailing for me is not memorable. All right. So that's just a small note, but if you think about Cavalli Detail, Cavalli Stables Detailing offered a lot of niche services. There is a lot on their website. There was a lot of different specific services that they offered. So for me, maybe there's a couple more niches that I would have never expected. I would have never expected an auto detailing company to offer different, you know, completely different services like barbecue cleaning, garage cleaning, other things like that. So there's just some, you know, some things that could come up unexpectedly. And so for me, I would never want to do what Cavalli Detailing does, but I can understand now that there's more niches and more opportunities that might be available in the future or as I build my brand. All right, so let's narrow it down. Which competitor can I learn from the most? That's sort of what the that's sort of what we want to focus on now because we you know it starts off when we first Google it we see a lot of competitors, then we narrow it down to a couple based on their ranking, based on their reviews, based on their online presence. We choose a few. Now we want to just pick one that we're actually going to focus on, and then we'll move, we'll really really narrow in on them, understand their business thoroughly, and then try to position ourselves against them. So we want to pick one, maybe two, but I would say just pick one and focus on them. So my choice, if we go back, if I'm going to pick the top three here that I chose from, we got Cavalli, got Mobile Auto Care, and we got Infinity Mobile Auto Detailing. So I'm liking, I, I think Cavalli Stables is someone I want to, you know, kind of mimic my my online presence. You know, they have online booking, they got great social media, they got a website with lots of, uh, lots of visuals, clearly a lot of customers. So I'm probably going to go with competitor one, all right? So that'll be my choice in order to do the, a little bit of a deeper investigation. All right. So here's my choice. So now we got to think of what is the most valuable information we can get from them. All right. So if we put this into the simplest terms, the biggest piece of information or the most value information is going to be their system. All right. So let's think about our system. What do we know about their system already? What do we know about, you know, the customer's expected journey? All right. So already. So the need and the problem. And what do we, you know, what do we want to know in terms of each specific area? You know, we've done some investigation online, but now we want to think more specifically about our system because we're going to build our system. So we want to understand their system first. So how do they address the need or the problem? Do they have, you know, are they part of the problem? Do they have long wait times? Do they charge a lot of money for the service? Are they, you know, are they not very professional in the booking process? Do they, you know, do they have a large team of employees? So they're not, it's not very personalized or customized experience. So how do they fit into the my need or problem as a customer? 
Next thing is awareness. So how do they get, how do they make us aware? So for Cavalli, if we're going to choose them, they run Google ads. That's one thing that they do. They also use their social media page pretty actively, probably have some additional ways that they get customers, you know, through, through word of mouth, you know, if they're getting that many reviews, they're obviously doing something to, you know, whether they're asking customers directly to leave them reviews, or maybe they have an incentive program for customers to leave reviews. So you got a lot of ways that they're making us aware. And we think about the consideration. So when we're in that consideration stage and we're deciding between our options or deciding, uh, you know, what, what, uh, what's available to us, how we're going to go about solving our problem, do they facilitate that in some way? So do they provide us enough information? It's clear from their website that they're really using that as a tool to provide us with all information. They, they give us the online booking. So they make the consideration very easily on the, or, or they make the, they make us go to the decision point or get to the decision point a lot easier because they have the online booking taking us through the process. We can also think of it as their, you know, their online reviews and their Google listing when it said at the, on the blue part where it says request to quote, that was a way to, uh, f to facilitate us net to the decision point to making a, a decision on the service. So they actually do quite a bit on addressing our consideration stage. Uh, and then we think about the decision stage. So how did they make us feel about actually feeling confident to go forward and make that decision to pull that trigger? Did they hit that one unique selling point that's going to lead us to making the decision? Next thing is like delivery and use. So did they communicate the process? What's involved in their process? What, how do we, you know, how are we going to go about getting their services? What do they need from us in the process? How is that going to go all unfold? And then lastly, loyalty advocacy. So are they going to give us a good enough experience? Do, are they committed to giving us a great experience in order for us to then pass it along to our friends, leave them a review, um, or just overall come back to them every single year and be a very loyal customer and happy customer? So these are some of the things that we want to think about and we want to know about their system. So there's only one way we can learn now, and we're actually going to do this. So we're going to pick up the phone and call them as a potential customer. This is a very important step. This is probably going to be the first step that you're actually getting out of your comfort zone a little bit, but we want to call them as a potential customer and get some information from them. So we want to go through their entire booking process to understand it. As you go along, you want to pick it. You want to pick out some questions that you're going to want to uh, want to ask. So here's some basic questions I put together. These are probably going to be the questions that I want to ask in order to get the understanding. So we want to ask about their service options. We want to, uh, we want to talk about what's included in the service. What's the price? What information do you need for me to book? So what are they going to actually ask me? Uh, what's involved in the process? So again, we want to see you know what what's going to go into the execution. How it's, they're actually going to get the job done. And then, you know, when is, when's their next appointment? When's their next availability? We want to talk about their availability and see when they can book us in. And then we'll maybe go from there, maybe ad lib some questions. So before we do this, let's think about what we're, what our scenario is, how we're going to approach this as a potential customer. And so you want to think, you know, first of all, if I'm going to get, be getting a car cleaning, we want to, we want to actually have a car in mind. We want to have some idea of what we're looking for. So we don't want to just be going in absolutely blank. We want to have some idea of what we can expect. We want to, and, and even if you don't have this specific car or you don't have a specific uh, idea or objective of what you're trying, what you're looking to expect, um, Still, this is something that you want to put some th thought into ahead of time and maybe you can just make it up. So you can maybe write some notes. I'm going to just say my car and then I'm going to just say, um, you know, the I'm going to lo be looking for a basic spring cleaning or, or just a clean at the end of the year. It's not the spring right now. So what I'm going to ask them is what is their availability? How busy are they in the spring? Things like that. So just having a game plan, you can obviously wing it. And like worst case scenario, they, you know, they just they realize that you're not a real customer and they just if they hang up on you like there's no there's not really any like bad case scenario that can happen from this um so we're just going to play it cool we're going to play it easy and we're going to see what happens so let me look up um let me look up their number and then i'm going to give them a call mobile auto detailing oakville let's check their mobile we're going to check their mobile and see how they are you know how easy they are to call as well all right so funny enough, they actually don't run ads on, if I'm on my phone, they actually don't run ads and they don't come up at all on the first page of the Google listing. So this is something that's very interesting to take a note of, which I'm actually very, very surprised. All right, so I literally cannot see them anywhere. Maybe I missed it. Nope. That's crazy. 
All right, so maybe I'll choose someone else other than Cav Cavalier, uh, Cavalier um, Auto Detailing. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna choose my second option in my competitor analysis. I'm gonna choose Mobile Auto Care Detailing. Um, but again, this is something you can do with a couple different competitors. So we're just gonna choose uh, we're just gonna choose Mobile Auto Care Detailing, and we're just gonna play this. You know, we're gonna play this cool, play this easy. Right now, it's it's not in the spring, so I'm gonna ask them. I'm gonna I'm gonna you know, maybe I'm going to try to maneuver around that. I'm going to try to play it cool here. So let's, let's give them a call. All right. So we're calling now. Hello. Hi there. Uh, I was just going to inquire about your services. I just had a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so right now I have, uh, I have a Nissan Altima, basically just like, a, I guess like a regular, uh, sedan. Um, so I'm wondering like, what, like what kind of service options you got for that? I'm um, looking for like a detailing, probably like interior and exterior, um, probably mostly focused on interior. Um, just kind of like wondering what you'd have, uh, what kind of service options you have available for that. Okay. Uh, so we can definitely do that for both interior and exterior. For interior, what we usually do is um, so are the are the seats uh, leather or fabric? They're leather. Uh, leather. Okay. So we um, obviously vacuum uh, the entire car, uh, shampoo the carpets uh, and the seats, apply protectant on the seats and all the the actual trims, the the dashboard, center console. Uh, the doors, uh, steering wheel, like ev everything, um, any trims around the car, and um, pretty much leave it like looking almost brand new. And for the exterior, uh, we pressure wash uh, the exterior, give it a hand wash, um, rinse it off, and then um, we can we can apply a layer of um, wet wax. That's that's a, a traditional uh, cost. Okay, cool. Um, and then like with the, like in terms of like the inside, like would you, like what kind of products do you use? Do you use anything, like do you use like a steam cleaner? Like do you use like some basic cleaning yeah. stuff? Yeah, yeah. So uh, obviously uh, the brushes uh, and the microfiber cloths uh, for the main, um, like like trims, like the steering wheel, um, some of the leather even like in the crevices, um, steaming all the, the air vents. It's a, it's a professional service. Cool. All right. And so what would be the pr like price price for that? Okay. So for, um, I mean, usually for interior for a car like that would be a hundred. Um, but I mean, if, if you're looking to do interior and exterior, then we can do both, um, for around 140, uh, just depending on the condition. Okay. Is that plus tax or is that including tax? Uh, no, tax included. Okay, cool. Um, and then I was also wondering, like, you know, what, in terms of, like, if, if I want to, like, book. I, so I've been, like, kind of, like, considering whether I'm going to do it now or I'm going to do it, like, in the spring. Like, when, when would you say, like, you're busy? Like, if you were, if I were to do it in the spring, like, what would be your, like, lead times there compared to now? Uh, I'm, I'd definitely be busier uh, spring time. Uh, just because, you know, it's the beginning of the season. Everyone's... Um, like pretty much trying to what like clean away all the the snow and the and the soil and everything. Um, I actually was pretty busy uh, because again people wanted to do the last detail before the winter. Uh, it started to to cool off a bit, so I'm definitely uh, more free now than would be in the spring. So it's up to you. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll think about that. But it's, it's just like in terms of like what it, what, like what would be next in the, in like your booking process, like what information you need from me and like how we go about doing this. Uh, pretty much just, uh, your name, uh, and address that we'd, we'd specify a time, uh, together and then, yeah, I'll, I'll pass by that and get it done. Okay, cool. And it's completely mobile. Like you don't need to, like, do you need yeah. anything from me in the process or do you see my car so, there? Uh, for, for interior and exterior, uh, I just need two things: so an electrical outlet and a water supply. Okay. Uh, like a hose, a water hose, and just electrical. Outlet. So we have like extension cords and everything. Okay, cool. Okay, so you said uh, one forty all in would be the one forty all together, everything included. Cool. And like, how long would it take? 
Uh, about, I mean, obviously depending on the condition, but around two hours usually. If it's, okay. Uh, if it's not too bad. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Let me just, uh, yeah, let me just put some thought into that and then I'll figure out like my schedule and we can go from there. Yeah. No problem. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Bye. -bye. bye. All right, so we just did it. We just asked some questions. As you can see, I kind of, you know, I just kind of went with the flow of it, asked some questions as they came up. But we got uh, we got a lot of valuable insights from that uh, from that call. We do that from a couple other customers, but yeah, we kept it simple. You know, we asked what the service options were. He pretty much just described um, like a basic like exterior interior. You know, I didn't hear too many add-ons. Didn't have any additional uh, things there. So it is. You know, it's pretty clean cut what they offer. Takes them two hours. What's included is he described in detail. And if you could notice before he even gave me the price, he really described everything that was included in the service. Uh, it wasn't something that, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, he just gave me a price and we went forward with it. It was something that he really wanted to make sure that I knew what was involved in the service. And he was really, you know, upselling a lot of all the, you know, what the process included. Talked about the price. Um, so it's $140 all in for the interior and exterior. So that's a good idea of what the, you know, what an average price would be. I'd say he's probably a mid range, maybe on the lower end. So you had an opportunity to learn from that. Uh, and then what information you need me to book. So he had a very bo simple booking process, you know, name, uh, we pick name, email, and we pick a time. So it's very easy and it's completely mobile. You know, what's involved literally two hours. He just needs a power outlet and, and a water source. So he's very clear with what I need. And in terms of next appointment did say he was busier. We didn't have an exact time frame on that, but definitely said he was busier in the spring compared to now at the end of the season. So it definitely varies based on that. It probably varies, you know, if I'd called him in March or April or May compared to if I'd called him in August compared to if I call them in October or November, you know, varies a lot. So we got some good information from that and you could see how easy it was to do. Probably took about, you know, I don't even, I don't know the exact time, probably about five, 10 minutes to get that information. And we got a really good idea of just our competitor, like who he is, like as a guy, we could tell that, you know, he, he said that he was the guy coming out. He was the person. So we know that it's the actual owner that's coming out. They don't have a salesperson or sales staff. It's just him. Maybe during the season, they would more, more in the busy season, but uh, it's just him. And he, he, you know, we could get a feel for his general demeanor, his professionalism. And I'll leave that up to you with what you guys think uh, of that interaction as as people were, who were listening to it. Uh, from my interaction, I thought he was decently professional, not overly enthusiastic, but also not underly enthusiastic. Uh, so it was definitely someone that I would probably feel comfortable with, but maybe I wouldn't feel overly excited to do business with. So there's a couple things to keep in mind. So if we want to analyze, again, these are some of the questions that you can go through yourself. So do you answer right away or go to voicemail? He answered right away. Was, was decently professional, wasn't very enthusiastic. You know, he's knowledgeable. He really described his service, pretty confident in what he offered. And, you know, what information do you need to gather? Very few. He didn't, very little information. He didn't need to get a lot of information from, from me to get the booking, which might make it easier for me um, rather than making a long, dragged out process. You know, those companies that make you go through the whole ringer in order to just book the service. Sometimes you just want a quick and convenient booking. The process was quick and convenient. And uh, what were the wait times? You know, he, he said they definitely were a little bit busier in the spring and uh, it wasn't a lot of wait times in the off season. Uh, but we don't need to worry about that. We want to think about the think about the main course of operations the spring and the summer. So all in all, what can we learn to apply to our own business? That's what we're thinking about in this interaction. We're not calling our competitors for fun. We're calling our competitors to do some research. Some primary research is the quickest way to get a feel for who our competitors are, what they're like. So thinking about what we can apply to our own business. How do we want to be different? How can we you know, mimic some of the things that we liked? How can we go from there? All right, so if we're gonna break this up by each of our section of our system that we're building, uh, so what did we learn here? So the need of the problem, he very much addressed this. You know, he talked a lot about uh, you know the value. Talked about all the process. It, you can tell he understood that. Um, that you know, we we understood like, that he he wanted to be convenient because he didn't have an extensive booking process and he didn't really overly talk. He didn't hit us with too much. And you know, in terms of the actual booking, did understand the spring he's busier than he is now, so he did want to acknowledge that. You know, in terms of awareness. Uh, again, we weren't, you know, we didn't gain a lot from, from this call. That was mostly through the, you know, through our discovery process. We saw that he was pretty highly ranked on Google. I think he was the number one outside of the ads, something to, to, uh, to keep in mind. So that's pretty, uh, that's pretty impressive that he's done that. So he's making people aware through that. He's got some reviews, doesn't run ads to the best of our knowledge, doesn't really use social media that much either. Next is consideration. So when we were chatting with him, did he make us actually feel, you know, compelled to move to the next part to make that to, to go to the decision or consider a decision? Or did it seem like we were just, 
you know, we could just shop around and we could go from there. So I think that from my perspective, I showed like a lot of interest in the service. I was pretty, uh, pretty like clear cut that if, so I, I try to put myself in the shoes of, you know, if I was a business owner, would I want to convert myself as a customer? And I think that I put myself in a position to be converted. He didn't overly try to do that. He didn't really try to sell me too much on it, but he did give me a lot of information. He didn't do the opposite either. So I'd, I'd say he was pretty neutral there in the consideration. I would probably, if I was looking, for, actually looking for car cleaning service, I'd probably shop around a little bit more. He didn't give me the utmost confidence in booking his, booking his service. Next thing's decision. So again, he didn't really pull the trigger on on really making me get to that decision point. I like talking to him. He's a nice guy, but I didn't really feel like I was compelled to make a decision at that point. He didn't really say anything that really triggered me to get to that stage of making a decision. Delivery and use, we got a feel for his process. He really described the process and we can see, you know, we can, we, I mean, he gave us some information on his website. He gave us a little bit more information there. He really described all the details that went into it. I thought he did a pretty good job of that. Uh, and then in terms of, you know, loyalty advocacy, you know, it is someone that I know I'm working with the business owner. I know I'm supporting him directly. So maybe if I do build that relationship with him and I am, you know, I feel close with him afterwards, I might feel a little bit more loyal and, and want to advocate rather than just having a sales rep uh, or someone who's just someone who's hired. I'm actually working with the, the actual owner himself. So I do feel pretty, pretty good about that. All right. So an action here, multiple or, or sorry, repeat this process with multiple competitors if necessary. If you get enough insights from just one, then that's great. When I first started out, this was one of the first things I did. I think it's a really great step in the process. I think I called three or four competitors, didn't do a whole lot of research online first, literally just picked up the phone. I Googled barbecue cleaning services uh, with, again, this was my, my original summer business. And I called a couple of competitors and got a feel for what they're offering. Don't be too, don't be you know nervous about this. Don't be too scared about this. You're not doing anything wrong. You're just doing, you're just, you know, going through their customer experience, asking them some questions. And at the end of the day, you're going to gain a lot of insights for your business. All right. So once you understand your competitors, we no longer need to pay attention to them. We're moving forward. Our focus is going to be entirely on the customer. No, it's not our goal to try to compete with our competitors and do, and, and, you know, do everything that they're doing. We want to be different and we're going to set ourselves up to be different, but this stage, we're just going to understand what's out there. So when we're actually talking about our service, we're talking about what we're doing. We know that we're that much better. We know we're that much different. And we can confidently say our key differentiators, you know, an example for me that comes to mind when we're thinking about my old business, barbecue cleaning services, this is my summer business. And a big differentiator that we had is we never used any abrasive harmful cleaning, uh, you know, equipment on the barbecue. So for our customers, they were accustomed to, or anyone who had gotten barbecue cleaning service was accustomed to com someone coming in with a power drill or an angle grinder and essentially stripping an entire layer off their barbecue. Effectively, this would get the grease off, but it would also strip a layer of the enamel on the entire appliance. So over time, this would cause damage. And we saw this over and over and over again when we were cleaning customers' barbecues that had already been cleaned by our competitors. We noticed all the damage, all the rusting, all the things that were coming because they were constantly doing this process. So this allowed us to differentiate and actually confidently tell our customers that this made us different because there wasn't anyone else doing it the way we were doing. So that's something to note. Moving forward, we're going to focus entirely on our customer and we're going to focus on their problems. What, what can we do to address the customer's problems? We don't need to dwell on our competitors. In our minds, they don't even exist anymore. We're, we're the go-to for this service. We're going to become the kings and queens of our service. All right, so your action is to complete your customer analysis. Don't go too in-depth with it. Follow the steps we put here. Make some notes about your competitors. Have fun with it. Don't stress out about this. It's fun. It's a it's a cool experience. Post about your experience on the StartSmart platform. Tell us about it. Tell us your experience of calling a competitor and pretending you're a customer. Hopefully, it's it, it makes you a little bit excited, a little bit nervous. But overall, tell us all about it. We're here together. I want to hear you know I want to hear some funny stories. I hope we have some funny stories from some competitor interactions. You know, even if your competitor catches you asking you know, suspicious questions, we want to hear about it. We want to make we want to have fun with this. All right. So good luck. Get to it. We'll chat soon.